Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have an exciting topic. We are going to be going back to what I touched on in my what if I can't feed raw video, which you can watch in the link at the top of the video. We are going to talk about Zeewee Peak today and why I think it is the best dry food for ferrets out there. Nothing compares to this food aside from obviously a made raw diet. Zeewee Peak is pretty much the next best thing and I do consider it a dry food. I'll touch more on that later. Before we get into this video, do not forget to hit like, subscribe for more ferret content and let's just jump right into it. I also wanted to mention that I am not sponsored by Zeewee Peak to make this video at all. I also just posted a whole crap ton of new posts on my blog if you're interested. I have a very comprehensive and detailed ingredient list on my blog that you can actually go through and search the ingredients in your ferrets food to see what each of them mean. I think it's a super helpful and useful tool. I also have posts on aflatoxins, mycotoxins, and glyphosate in pet food in your ferrets food, so please go check that out so you can educate yourself on those topics. Seaweed Peak is a brand stationed in New Zealand and they do ship to other parts of the world. They use an air drying process on their foods. They also only manufacture in small batches, which is really nice. They also claim to be very nutrient dense and digestible, which which we will look at and confirm in a second. They also claim to be free from E. coli, Salmonella, Listeria bacteria, which we do know that carnivores are perfectly fine of handling on their own. They do have a 21 month shelf life, which is pretty cool with no synthetic preservatives. It's all natural preservatives, which is good to hear. I really like this little blurb that they have on their website that says, dogs and cats are carnivores and they thrive on meat. Their bodies aren't designed to digest carbohydrates like grains, soy, corn, potatoes, wheat, and rice. Our recipes are carefully crafted to mirror the whole prey, meat-rich diet that dogs and cats require. That's why we have organs like heart and lung in our food because that is what a dog or cat eats when it catches its prey in the wild. It consumes everything. We have over 96% fresh meat, organs, seafood, and bone in all of our Zeewee Peak air dry products. I really like this blurb. This is not something that you're gonna see on a lot of websites. And if you do, they say something like this and then they go and they add corn, other grains or vegetables in their foods that don't belong there. So it really doesn't make any sense. There are a lot of companies that say, your cat is an obligate carnivore. They can only eat meat, but then they're selling their food that has grains in it. They also only use ethically and sustainably sourced ingredients according to their website. They also include at least 3% green lip mussels in their recipes, which we will talk more about later, along with tripe and kelp, which are actually great sources of nutrients for our pets. So in raw feeding, cats and ferrets, we generally follow a prey model style diet. That is what it is called. This diet is meant to replicate what their ancestors would eat naturally in the wild. Hence why it's called sometimes ancestral diet or primordial diet, biologically appropriate. Those all mean whatever their ancestors were eating in the wild or are eating in the wild. The base guideline for carnivores is 80% meat, 10% organs, and 10% bone. You can break that down even further if you'd like into 70% meat, 10% heart, 5% liver, 5% other organs, 10% bone. Over the years, cat owners and nutrition specialists have realized that this model is good, but it's even better when you build off of it and adjust it, do a little tweaks to it for cat consumption to make it a little bit more appropriate and suitable for them. So what they came up with is 84% meat, 6% bone, 10% organs. So it's slightly different from the 80-10-10, but not too different. Keep in mind, this is for cats. Ferrets do generally do better with a diet that has more bone than normal. So that's why I still follow the 80-10-10, or I will do a 75-15-10 instead for ferrets because they do just enjoy having more bone in their diet. That's They tend to do a little bit better that way, but that's not something that you necessarily have to worry about when you're feeding a complete diet. I did reach out to Zeewee Peak to see what their specific formula ratios look like, and unfortunately not many companies, not many freeze-dried raw companies will actually want to disclose the specifics with you, which is very alarming to me. So I'm happy that Zeewee Peak did choose to respond and help me out. So their answer was that their formulas consist of 70% meat, a minimum of 25% organs, and a maximum of 5% bone. Pretty close.
it is a lot of organs, but looking at the recipes, they do contain other secreting organs, usually above the liver, meaning that they probably have slightly extra of those, which is good. You want to stick to the same amount, very specific amount of liver because it contains fat soluble vitamins, something that cannot be naturally excreted by the body, but other secreting organs like kidney, thymus, they have water soluble vitamins like vitamin B. Those are able to excrete naturally. So having a little bit more of those kinds of organs is not a issue. It's actually really good for them because organs are nature's superfood. So the more that they have, the better usually, as long as you keep liver to the very specific amounts. So let's look at their formulas. So they have beef, lamb, lamb and mackerel, and chicken. They do have a couple newer, more fancier formulations, but I'm not going to be focusing on them today because according to what I've seen, I do like the base recipes a little bit more. They seem to be more complete. I have been asked about their wet foods, and when looking at them, they actually all contain chickpeas, and that's a very dangerous ingredient for obligate carnivores, so I unfortunately cannot recommend that for you. But let's look at their beef recipe. All right, so I'm looking at it right now. The first ingredient is plain beef, which is a great ingredient to see as the number one ingredient. You never want to see byproduct or beef meal, chicken meal, anything like that as the first ingredient. That is a large indicator of low quality meat products in the food. The second ingredient is beef heart, which is a excellent ingredient. Unfortunately, a lot of pet foods fall short of including something like this. Heart provides taurine, which is an essential amino acid for cats and ferrets required for them to actually survive without taurine in the diet. They can can go blind, have heart problems, and suffer other serious issues. So if a food for cats or ferrets doesn't include heart meat or usually it's synthetic taurine added, that could be a huge, huge issue and avoid those at all costs. Again, most foods will supplement with artificial taurine and actually Zewi Peak does do this at the end of the list, but I'm okay with that because they do contain more than enough, most likely, of the heart meat and quality organs to actually give the ferret and cat that needed taurine. I think they add the synthetic taurine at the end just as a precaution because it is very dangerous if they don't get enough. Beef kidney, another great ingredient. This is considered other secreting organs, so it is part of that 25% of the total organ content in each recipe. I have fed beef kidney to my ferrets in the past, so this is something that I would normally feed, so I like to see it in a pet food. I only have good things to say about it. It provides a lot of water soluble vitamins. It's also a really good source of vitamin D and selenium. Next ingredient is beef tripe. I love feeding beef tripe. I actually have an entire post on my blog on this ingredient and I do feed it weekly to my ferrets right now. So I like that this is included in the food as well. It provides a lot of enzymes required for digestion and it promotes a strong healthy immune system which is great. It also supplies trace minerals like manganese which is essential in diets that do not include whole prey for and feathers. The fact that they include something like beef tripe really goes to show that they know their stuff and they have been keeping up to date in the raw feeding world, something that I love to see. Next ingredient is beef lung. This is a muscular organ and it's actually fed as part of the meat portion in a raw diet, not the organs. It's a little confusing, but lung is a great source of protein, iron, and selenium. The next ingredient is green-lipped mussels, something that I feed to my ferrets weekly as well. They also provide trace minerals such as manganese, along with the tripe, which is again deficient in diets lacking whole prey, fur, and feather items. They are also rich in glucosamines, something that is great for senior pets and young pets alike. Also contains glycogens and fatty acids. It's overall a really good food to feed for your ferrets in a raw diet, so also happy to see this included in a pet food. I think that that is a wonderful decision that they've made. This is the only dry food that I have seen actually contain something like this, so I'm very impressed by that that. Next ingredient is beef bone. Of course, this is a source of calcium and amino acids, crucial for the development and maintenance of a ferret. Most companies will elect to include bone meal powder or calcium chloride instead of actual beef bone, chicken bone. So I like to see that here as well. I like to see the real deal. While I do feed something like human grade bone meal powder, 
Oftentimes when I do like an organ soup just to keep their poops firm, it's not necessarily super good for them long term and the bioavailability of it isn't actually really proven so we don't really know if it's doing that great of a job if they're really benefiting from something like bone meal powder. Lecithin, this is a natural antioxidant. I have nothing else more to say about that. Nothing notably harmful with this ingredient. The next one is inulin from chicory. Chicory roots obviously provides inulin in the body. It is a prebiotic meaning it is food for the probiotics or good bacteria in the body as well as in the food. Pretty gimmicky, not exactly super required in a food according to what I found online on it. Next ingredient is dried kelp. A lot of people actually freak out when they see something like this in a food for ferrets or cats because they automatically assume it's like a plant or a vegetable. It's actually a sea vegetable which is totally different from our normal vegetables like peas, carrots, what you would find in pet foods. Sea vegetables provide antiviral benefits. It helps maintain blood glucose levels. Most notably, they actually provide iodine, another mineral that is often lacking in diets that do not include whole prey items, fur and feathers. So then they just have a couple mineral ingredients. Salt is an iffy ingredient in pet food, but not notably harmful. Definitely not when compared to some other things that you may see in other pet foods. I think that this addition in here isn't necessarily needed. So let's look at these preservatives here. So they have citric acid, and this is a decent preservative. It provides vitamin C, antioxidants for the ferret. It's actually considered an anti-carcinogenic too, which is really cool. The next one is mixed tocopherols, which is a natural source of vitamin E. It's a pretty decent preservative that works to preserve the food naturally, which I really like. This is a good preservative in comparison to what a lot of other foods include. Now we have a couple vitamin ingredients. So choline chloride isn't really needed in this food, in my opinion, but maybe in their analysis, they fell short somewhere and felt like they needed to add it. Generally, this is added to foods that do not include enough quality meat and organs in their food so they have to add this to make sure that the animal is getting all the vitamins and nutrients that they need. I don't necessarily think that uh, this food needs it because it does include a lot of organ meat but I don't necessarily have an issue with them including this as just a precaution because they already have a bunch of great sources at the top of the ingredient list for vitamins and nutrients. Next one is thiamine mononitrate and this is just a standard source of B1. Nothing else really to say about that. Next we have pyridoxine hydrochloride. This contributes to uh, metabolism of proteins, red blood cell production. Then we have folic acid, which is used in DNA synthesis and blood building. And we also have vitamin D3 supplement, which is pretty self-explanatory. D-L-methionine provides healthy skin, nails, hair benefits. And we have taurine, which we already talked about. Overall, quality ingredients. I'm sure that there are things on here that you've never seen in a pet food before. They don't skip corners. They sustainably source their ingredients. It's a small list, safe, natural preservatives, and minimal synthetic nutrition. This is what I think everyone should strive for in a food for their carnivore. I'm a fan of this a lot. <laughs> the other formulas are mostly the same, just the main animal is different. To properly help you really understand how much better this food is than others, I do have to compare it to another food in order for that to actually happen, in order for it to be relatable and relevant, and I do have to choose something popular to relate it to. So today I am going to be relating it to Y Song Ferret Food. This is the probably one of the most popular foods fed to ferrets, and I know most of you probably already know my opinions on this, but um, it would have been super unfair for me to compare an air-dried raw product to something like Zupreme or Missouri, something really low quality, because I mean, there's a huge disconnect here. But for Song, people think it's very reputable, very high quality, and good for ferrets, so I thought that that would be a good one to actually compare and contrast to. Whenever I mention Song, people go insane, they get pissed off at me, how could you, you know, discredit such a large company that everyone is feeding to their ferrets? The thing with pet care is it's constantly evolving. We're learning about our pets every single day, every single year. Pet food has not been around for a very long time, so we are still learning, especially in that department. Over time, I've learned that while comparing the ingredients in this food to other foods, not even just air dried raw foods. I've compared it to other kibbles as well and the ingredients are subpar at best. While I do appreciate that it's a starch free and vegetable free food, it does come with its dangers. It's also caused a lot of ferrets digestive upset including my own ferrets. So if you are upset that I'm talking about it today and bringing up the ingredients in the food, I'm not going to blindly support a company that 
I don't believe in. And I really do worry about people who are so stuck in their ways that no matter what you put on the table for them, or no matter what Y song is done, no matter how many metal nails and dead animals have been found inside the kibble bags, they will still continue to feed it. That's just the reality of it. I mean, I'm someone who used to feed Y song to my ferrets. I'm someone who used to say that it was the best food for ferrets ever. And I changed, I was able to evolve my pet care to match what I believe in and what I feel is right. So I'm not gonna go over every ingredient because the list is much longer. I will just go over some of them, just the main ones here. The first ingredient is chicken meal. This is a rendered, heavily processed ingredient and it can be from any quality of animal, which is why meat meals and byproducts are just not ideal. You're gonna wanna find a food that has chicken or lamb as the first ingredient. Pet food companies actually do not need to disclose where they source their ingredients from and why song doesn't. It is followed by organic chicken, which is much better, but really that should be the first ingredient. Chicken fat is an okay ingredient used for energy, much better than non-descriptive ingredients like animal fat. You don't want to see that on the label. Chicken fat is much better to see. Dried plain beet pulp. This is an inexpensive source of fiber and filler. It's also non-nutritive, which means it doesn't really provide much benefit fits to the ferret. It does provide prebiotics for the long list of probiotics in the food at the end there. It's meat protein isolate. This is one of the many ingredients in this food used to enhance the flavor of the food. And I'm not going to say that they do this, but a lot of companies, according to the many places that I researched this, oftentimes flavorings are used to mask unsavory ingredients in the food usually low quality animal meat and products um, or a lot of grains which this food doesn't include so it's not trying to mask grains it is considered an msg which is monosodium glutamate which is actually a known carcinogen in humans so which is, it's not really ideal it can also come in ingredients like yeast culture yeast extract natural flavor and why song contains all of those dried apple fiber another fiber ingredient and this isn't bio-appropriate for a ferret at all. It's derived from apples, so obviously it's not appropriate for use in obligate carnivores, and it's also been linked to GI upset in carnivores as well. Flax seeds. Flax seeds in general are not an awful ingredient. When I had a horse, I was feeding him flax all the time because it was super good for him. It's just not really needed in the diet of a carnivore, obviously. They do provide fatty acids and more fiber, but the diet shouldn't need them if it's complete in animal product and organs. Ferrets lack the biological composition to actually benefit from ingredients like flax seeds and dried apple fiber so it's just something to keep in mind it we don't even have any proof that they can benefit from things like flax seeds. And we have artificial taurine due to no heart meat added in this particular food. Calcium carbonate is just a standard source of calcium, but calcium propionate, this is actually an antifungal chemical that is a possible carcinogen, so it's not an ideal ingredient in a pet food. Choline chloride, we already talked about this, but in this particular food, it's because there is no organ meat, so they need to substitute with synthetic nutrition and a lot of nutrient ingredients like choline chloride. It's necessary necessary in this case. Then we have coconut oil. Coconut is a fruit, so this is a fruit oil. doesn't really have a place in the diet of a obligate carnivore. It's not primordial or ancestral in any way, and it doesn't actually have any proven benefits. Uh, what we do know is it can cause GI upset and aggravate conditions such as IBD and pancreatitis. Not something that I would include in the diet for my ferrets. Next we have fish oil. I'm excited to talk about this one because I, I don't think I've ever really gone into detail on fish oil because I think with the rise of salmon oil being fed to kibble fed ferrets, it looks like fish oil would also be good, but fish oil is actually a non-descriptive unknown product. You don't know what fish is being included. It could include something nutritious like wild caught mackerel, or it can contain something non-sustainably sourced, not of any quality, such as farmed salmon. Bottom line is we don't know what is actually used to make this fish oil and why song doesn't specify on their website. So this is just a non-descriptive ingredient. So that was a lot to go over, but in general, I hope you can see the pros and cons of both foods that we talked about today. Really, with Seaweed Peak, the only con, if you can call it a con, is the 
salt added to the food. It isn't really notably bad. Salt has been linked in cats to things like bladder stones because it sort of dehydrates them. I don't know, maybe it's necessary when creating an air dried product. I'm not sure. I'm not a pet food manufacturer. I don't know how that works. Some raw feeders will actually argue that salt is a great addition in a raw diet, at least for cats that I've seen. Usually it's a different form of salt, but I have seen it fed to cats. So really confirm or deny the benefits or drawbacks from that. And why song obviously Obviously, there is a whole lot more cons. Really, the only nutritious non synthetic ingredient in Y Song is organic chicken. And you want to feed a food that has multiple good ingredients, not just the one good ingredient. Maybe chicken fat is also good quality in this food, but we don't really know. If you still want to call me biased, go ahead. I'm just stating the facts here. I can say that comparing an air dried raw product is not fair to a kibble, but I mean, they're both very popularly fed to ferrets. You, there has to be some sort of comparison in order for people to want to switch foods. And why song is the cheaper food. And I hope that after watching this video, you understand why why that is and you understand why Zeewee Peak is so expensive. It is going to be more expensive than Y Song. That's just how it is. Obviously, you have to be pretty naive to think that a food with such high quality ingredients is going to cost you less than a processed kibble. It just it life doesn't work that way. If you want to feed Zeewee Peak, I recommend feeding multiple of their recipes and feeding it in water along with feeding 1 to 2 eggs per ferret per week whisked together and make sure that you serve the egg in a separate dish. You can also feed fish like mackerel or salmon in the week, but if you feed the lamb and mackerel formula, you probably won't really need to do that. And they do include a lot of natural sources of fatty acids in the food with the green-lipped mussels and whatnot. So it's not super needed, but it is a good treat for them if you're looking for a healthy treat to feed them in the week. So that is all that I have for you guys today. I hope you learned a lot about both Seaweed Peak and Wysong today. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to learn more about ferrets and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!